maybe avoid that. So there's this interplay back and forth. So there, there is, yes. and your capacity to be able to be in that fluid moment, both participant and observer, and it's very important because from a therapeutic perspective, if I were in session and suddenly I started thinking about Vienna sausages, right. I would want to allow myself to be a participant in the presence of another subjectivity, allow them to affect me in some way, but I'd also want to okay. be an observer. And right. so part of the training in becoming a therapist is to be, you, you sort of train the, the observer part to also be present, that I can mm -hmm. be in the moment, but at the same time the capacity to be able to also allow myself a reflective function. Yeah, I th I've heard you talk about having one foot in the stream, one foot on the bank. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember that? Yeah. We talked about that at one point, too. Sort of observe and also be a participant in the process Very important. as well. And let that, that uh, influence happen and, so that you can come out with something that's therapeutic. What's very trendy right now is this notion of mindfulness. I do a lot of work with soldiers in the private practice thing there. And um, um, one of the things that mindfulness does and outcome research, particularly on psychodynamics and psychotherapy show that there is an increased capacity for reflective function. And to be mindful is to say, right now to, you, it, you create that observer status to be able to say, what am I feeling? You do a, uh, uh, what the Buddhists call the sacred pause. You breathe right. and you ask, what is this I'm feeling? What might I do with it? Mm -hmm. So as opposed to being purely, uh, and we call this, th th there's a term for this in the attachment theory literature. Mm -hmm. If you mm -hmm. are embedded, you are, you are the current context in the, the uh, uh, whatever system you're currently in, you are, uh, you, are, you are completely lost in it. You are embedded in it. Right. You, uh, your feelings have you. You do not have your feelings. But if you allow yourself the capacity for some time. mindfulness and you begin to train yourself to be able to think and allow yourself that observer as well as participant status, you can begin to do something different with the feelings that you have. Okay. All A lot right. of people who Makes have PTSD, for instance, they have, um, their nervous systems have been wired to be able to deal with the situations of war. And mm -hmm. so they are this. And part of mindfulness training is to get them to be able to realize that, they, that when they're this, they can do this. I don't know. Okay. Does that make sense? And have a choice in, in, in the matter. Now, back to the, the, the question, though. The Taliban, mm, Taliban. having this, um, this move from a free society and having the freedoms that we enjoy here in this country, mm -hmm. uh, perhaps to a very restricted environment with lots of rules and, and uh, Eric oppressive Fromm. kind of thing. Where, why does the people, the question Eric, was why? Eric Fromm. You know Eric Fromm? Yes. He has a wonderful book, and the book is called Escape from Freedom. Escape from Freedom. There is a way in which becoming disembedded, becoming mindful of the world around you, carries with it the weight of responsibility. And Fromm, being sort of an existentialist, would say that we, we run from freedom, that um, there is okay. something, um, a, um, a very strict and ideologically pure religious or political system affords you an escape from freedom, right? Makes it, sense. it allows you to be embedded in such a way to, to not uh, bear the weight of, uh, of, of observer status. You literally are in the midst of something, and that mm -hmm. something is, it, 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 you can be lost in it in a way, and I think that in some way there is something to be said for those sorts There's of things. There's a lot of responsibility that comes with freedom, as people have talked I'll about I'll before, say. this notion that we have, to, we have to manage this, but if you're in that restricted environment, the rules are set for you, you have someone telling you what yeah. to do. Uh, there's a, there's, yeah, there's less of that responsibility, and, and some people may gravitate toward but, that. But one of my areas of interest, and we talked about maybe my coming on one of the other shows, maybe, right. maybe not, is, right. is, is that a, a religious or spiritual system affords you a, um, a worldview, allows you to be able to generate a narrative that uh, allows you to sort of swim through life in a certain way, and all of us have it to a certain degree, implicit or explicit, they're there. Mm -hmm. But certain worldviews, there's, there's this tension between science and religion, particularly, say, some uh, young earth creationist, for instance. Right. And, uh, and I've always been fascinated by this, this dialogue between people from these two points of view and the way in which in the act of dialoguing, sort of like with my Vienna sausage can, right. you have two subjectivities that sh show, shed light on each of the um, ideological presumptions in both camps. It's just interesting. Yeah, and so, by the way, when those two subjectives collide, is there accommodation for those? Is it one or the other? I mean, I assume you have to have this flow of this, for sometimes disjunctive thoughts from the subjective side from two individuals coming together, but um, how does that play out? I guess it could be it just stops and we move to the other or some interplay between those kinds of subjective 
Well, I, I think that, it, that, that you could you could talk of a scale. There is a there could be a complete rejection of the other. So in the presence of another subjectivity, for instance, uh, if someone from the Taliban walked into the room, we being of um, 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 we might reject even the possibility of dialogue with this individual. Mm -hmm. So he 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 actually does not. We, we 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 there is a failure to mentalize. He he is not something we don't engage him in a way. He still affects us. There still is a way in which his mere presence generates something within us. So there is right. a, a subjective tension, but it isn't a dialectic. And you go from there to something that engages minimal amount of dialectic to a, a full-on dialectic. And a full-on mm -hmm. dialectic allows oneself the possibility of change. Therapy, for instance, if it's going well, regardless of the theoretical model, is open. It generates a dialectic for the possibility of not just assimilation, but accommodation from a um, right. from a cogn cognitive uh, psychological perspective and in accommodation you your worldview changes so if if the guy if it some a member from the Taliban and we were we were wanting to do this and we sort of suddenly gave him some some fries McDonald's fries and right. are you allowed to eat fries if you're in the Taliban? I, I had no idea what the rules are on French no, fries or, or freedom fries or here in America as we hand about. him a Miley Cyrus CD yes now that one's not gonna go up. but if somehow the mere act of interacting with that, with that, with that um, Miley Cyrus, that the aesthetic ex experience of the Miley Cyrus CD might allow for not just an assimilation, which means he takes this and somehow places it with his world without any changing at all, it could uh, an accommodation. He may suddenly throw off his garments, um, he may shave, and suddenly he might enter our, uh, our, uh, our, our ideological system as a result of that's, the, uh, that's, that's a theoretical position. I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. Uh, by the way, have you seen that, that lady, maybe my, lady <laughs> latest Miley Cyrus video where she's like... We, like, we talked and, about that last... Well, no, no, that, that, was, that was the, that was the week, thing. Yeah. She has a video, yes. and in the video, unless I'm wrong, at one point, yes. she licks a hammer. <laughs> she licks a... Am I wrong? You guys seen that? Oh, we she talked to the crew over there. Yeah, they seem to... They, they're, they're, you just I don't know about up, you so guys, know what's gonna, but when you're... If, if some, where I come from, if someone called you a hammer licker, those are fighting words. That's, that's fighting I'm just words. saying. All right, you, you know what I think you just did? You, what? Well, you were, we were illustrating that point where you bring in something <laughs> and uh, subjective, and I think we just collided there. We did, we did, I yeah. don't so think there was a combination you, you, you or simulation. Well, if you're suddenly thinking of hammer licking, you know, because I'm just All saying. Right.